emergency critical care veterinarian, I see a lot of diabetes in cats. That's because an estimated one in every 200 cats is thought to be affected by this endocrine disease, likely due to the growing prevalence of obesity. So, what does it mean if your cat was just recently diagnosed with diabetes? With diabetes mellitus, the body doesn't produce enough insulin from the pancreas. Insulin is a hormone necessary to push sugar, or glucose, into the cells of the body to be utilized. Without insulin, the body and all the cells are starving for sugar, as the sugar can't get into the cells. As a result, the body is stimulated to produce more and more glucose in an attempt to feed the cells, leading to hyperglycemia, or an elevated blood sugar. This ends up resulting in a lot of the clinical symptoms of diabetes and ultimately can be fatal without treatment. There are two types of diabetes in dogs and cats. Type 1 diabetes mellitus, which is most commonly seen in dogs, occurs when the body fails to produce insulin, the hormone that is normally produced in the pancreas and that regulates blood sugar. This type requires lifelong insulin therapy delivered via a syringe twice per day. Type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is most commonly seen in cats, occurs when the body produces some insulin, but in inadequate amounts. That's why you need to give additional insulin with a syringe. Type 2 diabetes mellitus occurs when something is interfering with the body's ability to use insulin. For example, due to insulin resistance from obesity. With type 2 diabetes mellitus, diabetes can be transient, in other words, just a few months, and may not require lifelong insulin therapy. The more aggressive you try to treat your cat's insulin in conjunction with weight loss, follow-up visits with your veterinarian, blood sugar monitoring, and diet changes, the better the likelihood that your cat's diabetes could potentially go away, what we call going into remission. The excess sugar that is produced by the body results in the clinical signs seen with diabetes mellitus. Untreated or unregulated, meaning the blood sugar isn't controlled well, results in electrolyte abnormalities, fatty changes to the liver, cataracts in the eyes, mostly seen in dogs, peripheral neuropathies, abnormalities in the nerves, making cats walk down in the hocks or ankles, inflammation of the pancreas, and an increased risk of urinary tract infections. We most commonly see diabetes in the Siamese, in male cats, and in older cats, typically 8 to 13 years of age. Make sure you recognize the early signs of diabetes mellitus. This is important because the sooner we recognize the signs, the sooner we can identify and treat diabetes, and the less expensive and dangerous it will be for your cat. Symptoms include weakness, lethargy, excessive thirst, or filling the water bowl more often, drinking out of unusual places such as the bathroom sink or toilet, excessive urination, clumps in the litter box bigger than your clenched fist, poor skin condition like excessive dandruff or an oily hair coat, inappropriate urination, dilute urine, weight loss, most commonly over the back, increased hunger, obesity but still feeling bony and muscle wasted, walking down in the hocks or ankles, what we vets call a plantigrade stance with a very flat angle to the back legs, sweet acetone breath when in diabetic crisis, or even seizuring or coma. How do we diagnose diabetes in cats? The diagnosis of diabetes mellitus is based on physical examination findings and blood work changes commonly seen with the disease. Recommended tests include a complete blood count, or CBC, to look at the red blood cell count, looking for dehydration or anemia, and white blood cell count, looking for underlying infection. A chemistry panel to evaluate how high, or low, the blood glucose is, and to look at the kidneys, liver, electrolytes, protein, and other bodily functions. Normal blood glucose in a cat ranges from approximately 80 to 150 milligrams per deciliter. But when cats are stressed by going for a car ride or seeing the cat carrier, they get a temporary increase in their blood sugar, what we call a stress hyperglycemia.
This means their blood sugar can spike up to 200 or even 300 milligrams per deciliter in severe cases. Persistent repeated elevations in the blood sugar are consistent with diabetes mellitus in cats. The next test should be a urinalysis to look for the presence of sugar spilling over into the kidneys and bladder, suggestive of diabetes. Normally, there shouldn't be any sugar in the urine. A urine culture to rule out a urinary tract infection, a serum fructosamine blood test, which looks at the effect of blood sugar on the body's protein levels and gives us a general idea of how well the blood sugar is regulated, x-rays of the chest and abdomen to rule out underlying medical problems like cancer, pneumonia, or even bladder stones, an ultrasound of the abdomen to look at the architecture or inside of the organs, like the pancreas, to rule out metabolic problems, fatty changes to the liver, or even cancer. How do we treat diabetes in cats? Earlier, we talked about when cats develop diabetes, they often get type 2 diabetes mellitus. This means the diabetes may be transient. Because of this, we can try initial treatments that are less invasive than injections of insulin. This may include oral medications, dietary changes, and weight loss. Oral medications include hypoglycemic medications like glipizide, which attempt to lower blood sugar. Dietary changes include a low carbohydrate, high protein diet, such as Purina's prescription diet called DM for diabetes mellitus, or even canned kitten food. For obese or overweight cats, weight loss is imperative to help regulate diabetes. If your cat fails to respond to these initial treatments, in other words, they still have a persistently elevated blood sugar and have clinical signs of excessive urination or thirst, then twice a day insulin therapy is typically necessary. Just to warn you, most cats end up needing insulin. When we talk about how to treat diabetes in cats, it often ends up being a case of insulin therapy. While giving insulin injections may sound intimidating, cat owners typically feel very comfortable with it quickly. Once your veterinarian shows you how to do so, it's easy, as the needle size is minuscule. Ask your veterinary professional to shave the fur off a small area over the neck so you can see where you're injecting. This helps a lot. It's important to know the exact type of insulin that you are using, as each type of insulin requires a specific type of insulin syringe. Always confirm with your veterinarian, as human pharmacists may not prescribe you the correct type. All human-specific insulins, such as Detimer, Glargine, and NPH, must be given with the U100 syringe versus veterinary-specific insulins, such as PZI and Lente, must be given with a U40 syringe. Using the wrong type of syringe can lead to a massive overdose. Depending on the type of insulin your veterinarian recommends, we'll start your cat on a really low dose of insulin, often just one unit every 12 hours. Gradually, we'll increase this amount, depending on how your cat is responding to therapy. The reason why we can't just reach for a higher amount of insulin initially is it causes a life-threatening low blood sugar, what we call a hypoglycemia. This is another reason why is if your cat isn't eating, we want to hold off on the insulin dose as it can cause hypoglycemia. If you ever notice signs such as weakness, vomiting, not moving, hiding, tremors, or even seizures, get to a veterinarian immediately even in the middle of the night. Once you start your cat on insulin, you'll need to follow up closely with your veterinarian for the first few weeks to months. When I start a cat on insulin, I like to recommend a recheck within five to seven days, sooner if the cat isn't doing well. If all is going well, I typically recheck every two to four weeks thereafter for the first few months. After that, every three to six months is necessary to make sure the blood sugar is being regulated carefully. Keep in mind that untreated or unregulated diabetes can be fatal in cats, and the insulin and follow-up care can be expensive. That said, with appropriate care and treatment, cats with diabetes can live a long, happy life. With 
supportive care, the prognosis for diabetes is fair to good, although it does require frequent trips to the veterinarian initially to regulate the blood sugar and dedicated cat owners who can give twice a day injections of insulin. Again, I always warn owners that it's cost heavy for the first few months while we slowly adjust your cat's insulin needs. Once your cat is more stable, it may be less expensive over time and require less frequent veterinary visits. Without treatment, specifically insulin, diabetes can be fatal to your cat. In undiagnosed cases or in cats that aren't receiving enough insulin, the body and cells starve. This can progress rapidly to a life-threatening complication called diabetic ketoacidosis, what we call DKA, where the body breaks down fat in an attempt to feed the starving cells. Likewise, another complication called hyperglycemic hyperosmolar syndrome, or HHS, can also occur. There are several things you can do to prevent diabetes, including keeping your cat trim, feeding your cat an appropriate diet to maintain a healthy, slender weight, and increasing exercise. As cats lead more sedentary lives, it results in more weight gain, causing insulin resistance and increasing the risk of diabetes. Cats should be exercised at least once or twice a day, such as using a laser pointer or cat toy to simulate chase play activity or taking the time to walk them outside. Minimizing treats that contain high levels of carbohydrate can also help prevent excessive weight gain. Annual veterinary visits are a must, especially as your cat ages, to help detect problems sooner. Certain medical problems and drugs can predispose a cat towards diabetes, including pancreatitis, hyperadrenocorticism, acromegaly, and glucocorticoid drugs like prednisone or even progesterones. Your veterinarian may be able to detect these sooner based on routine physical examination and blood work. If your cat was just diagnosed with diabetes, know that it can initially be intimidating to give your cat two shots a day. But please know that the treatment is fair to good and cats can live with diabetes for years. With diabetes, the sooner we diagnose it, the sooner we can treat it, and the less expensive it will be.